What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Here we have a very special kit. This is the AMT Ertl's The Switchers 1925 T-Rod. A skill level 2 kit for ages 10 and up, molded in 125th scale. This is the 2003 Toy Fair Exclusive. On this side of the box, we get three wonderful photographs of the model showing different variations and options that come with this kit, including this really cool C-cab type of body style. And as we move the box across, we can see the front three-quarter view, same as on the box top of our 25T rod. And over to this side of the box, we see that 2003 Toy Fair exclusive sticker again. And right here, we get another shot of all these great little models. You can see the interior up in this shot, as well as the engine and the rear three quarters. This is a skill level two kit for ages 10 and up, which requires paint and glue. And now let's cut the jibber jabber and rip the lid right off this amazing model. So right away we've got our instruction sheet which Danny the dog will go over. We also have our decal sheet which I'll keep hidden so Danny can show it to you. Here's our clear plastic parts and then we've got all our gray components. We also have our chrome parts tree. You get one and two of those. Really cool. Then you also get your tires and well there's the empty box so take it away Danny. It's a dog's world, dum 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 dum, and sometimes it takes a dog to figure it out. Hello everybody, my name's Danny the Dog, and today we are going to be looking at the 25T Rod from the Switchers series. And uh, this model kit came out before in the past, just once, back in 1981. So here's a look at the box. All right, and we are back here looking at the instruction sheet. So here it's got the important, read this before you begin, and it shows us the non-plated parts, the plated parts, and the part numbers. And then right down here, we see our engine going together. So here we've got our left and right hand side engine block with the transmission, oil pan comes up from the bottom, our front timing chain cover goes on there. Then we have our right hand and left hand cylinder heads, as well as our valve covers, and these really cool two-piece exhaust manifolds. And then on this side, we've got our starter motor right there. Panel two shows our front suspension going together. Now here we have the frame rails, and then we have these nice little side pieces that go here. These are radius rods. And then we've got our steering rod here. There's our leaf spring going onto the chrome plated front axle. And then here we have our tie rod going in there. Now check out this really cool rear end here. We've got our frame right there, as well as our leaf spring and our differential. This is the torque tube drive type differential. There's those side pieces and then it's a two speed. So we have that on the back as well. And here we've got the left and right radius arms, which will go right on those little pins there. Now take a look at these meats. These are really big tires on the back. We got these cool chrome wheels that go through and there's the rear wheel which is also chrome. And then you put your metal axle into the hole in the back here. We have a two-piece disc brake that goes onto those parts on the uh, differential back here. And then when you slide the metal axle through you'd put another one of these tires on that side. Now check out panel five. This is really cool. The interior is a tub type, which is typical for the Model T's. Looks like you get the cover here. I wonder, Trevor will show us if there's a gas tank. Can't wait to see that. Here's the gear shift lever with the uh, dice on the top you can paint there. It's got one of those foot style foot pedals, looks like bare feet. And then we've also got our clutch and our brake pedal. And then we got the steering wheel which sticks straight up and down, as well as our instrument panel here. And all that hooks into our Model T little uh, body shell. Now correct me if I'm wrong, but doesn't this look like a Chevy 327, maybe a Corvette engine? Or it could be a 350. I mean, it was made in 1980, this kit. So here we've got our windshield frame with the two clear windows for top and bottom. And then we've got the braces which go down onto the frame for both sides. Our firewall glues onto our body here. And then here we've got the uh, front wheels going together. So you got your choice of these cool uh, four-piece wire wheels with a little hubcap that goes on the top or you have these kind of wheels and uh, this one's got the retainer and the disc brakes up front and the caliper there 
and the wheel back, the tire, and the front chrome wheel, which looks very much like the back wheel. Now this is where we get into the switcher type stuff. So up here you get two different types of hood scoops. You get this uh, cool little velocity stack thing going on top of the blower motor here, and that's a three-piece unit. Or you can add in these trumpets here and use uh, some, uh, well, what do you call those, carburetors, carbotutors, there we go. You either have the trumpets or the open exposed type carburetor. And then what's going on down here? Oh, that's the intake manifold. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh boy. There's our distributor. And then here we've got a different type of intake manifold for the blower. So, oh, I see. Oh man, this is really interesting. Okay, so the two hood scoops, you can put four barrel carburetors on top of the blower or use this intake setup and use this scoop. Or you can uh, use the trumpets on top of the carburetors, which could either go on top of the blower or go down here on this intake manifold for a completely different top with the distributor there or go across here and you use the blower manifold with the magneto and then you put that on top of the chevy engine so here you got the blower belt drive for this or the regular type belt drive with the fan on the front for this setup so isn't that really cool and now check this out you get two different radiators you get the full height 1908 type of radiator here or the later 1920s style radiator with the lowered angled uh, top end here. This one came out, I think it was 1915, if I remember right. Anyway, so yeah, you either get one or two of those, so, or you could use either one. And what do we have here? Well, this is the top for that cool tea bucket body. And what we have here is that C cab, so that would just sit on the top. There's a clear window that goes in the back and then left and right hand sides. And you can put this little piece of wood grain right in that little area there. Or you can use the convertible top with the T window in the back. Now that's cool. T for Model T. And then you get your uh, top there. So you can either use one of these or switch them in and out. They just would sit on the body shell. Now we've got a lot going on here. These are the headlights and it says optional headlight assembly must be trapped on the chassis by the radiator shell. Here it shows this little bar in here and then we our headlights drop in and the clear lenses go inside there. Now here it says turtle deck. The turtle deck locates by inserting the tab at the front under the back of the interior and pressing down onto the frame. So it would click in place. There's the turtle deck right there and you get the nice uh, backup light here and the license plate. Now down here you can also put on this pickup truck box. So here's the little top for that and there's the box there. Basically just enough to fit in this gas tank in here. And there's the back door and our license plate again and that tail lamp. And then here you can add on these optional fenders which would go in there. It does say uh, one each side cement in place. Here it says the pickup bed just sits on the frame for display purposes only. And then here we got our lanterns which would go up beside the windshield. Here we have our decal application and I'm going to show you what these look like in color later on. Now look at this, you get two different options. You get this cool early 80s, late 70s kind of uh, graphic package here. And then you also get these cool ones you could use for the sides. And here we get all the different options that you can build with your switcher's car. Like this hard top with supercharger and spoke wheels, rag top with supercharger and turtle deck, open roadster with twin carbs and mags, rag top with twin carbs and scoop, hard top with supercharger and injectors, Rag top with carburetors and velocity stacks. Open roadster with supercharger and injectors. Hard top with supercharger and scoop. Open roadster with pickup box and supercharger. Hard top with tin, twin cams. Open roadster with carbs and turtle deck. And a rag top with fenders and a turtle deck. Which one would you build? Have you built one of these in the past? If so, let us know in the comments down below. Okay, Trevor, show us the plastic parts. I can't take it anymore! Here we have a groovy little parts tree. It's groovy kind of loud. I think this is a Chevy 327 or possibly a 350. There's our engine block with the transmission and we have our belts and our cylinder heads and the front timing chain cover. Your choice of magneto or distributor. And we've got our radiators, the insides there and our steering wheel and those little wood grain panels that pop in the side of the C-cab. Again, you can see here just how wonderful this looks. Even has the frost plugs on the block molded in place. 
Look at those cylinder heads. Wouldn't you love those in your real car? Of course you would. So uh, they'd be very tiny though. All right, and there's that front cover and our belts and pulleys. Again, you can see the wonderful mesh on that radiator, those radiators. Again, really awesome looking stuff from good old MPC slash AMT Ertl. Here we have the parts trees that make up our body components. Here's our body shell, and there's that cool C-type top. And then here we've got our pickup bed, as well as the turtle deck, and the back lid for our pickup truck. There's our license plates, and one of the blowers, and our rear fenders. So let's just clear some of this out of the way and take a look at this body shell, for starters. This is very much like the AMT 25T body shells. However, this kit used to be an MPC kit, so you can see quite a lot of difference in the construction of this as well as it's a switcher's car, which is a completely different thing. So here we have the door. Now on the passenger side of the Model T, this actually opened, but the driver's side was just imprinted in. There wasn't actually a door here. Usually on the AMT kits, there'll be some hinges, but I don't see any here. So maybe we can assume that this is like a solid shell T bucket and it doesn't open. But you can see just how neat this is. There's all these little holes here where everything would just click into place, as well as ones for the convertible top. And then there's to mount onto the frame. Now I don't see any mold marks on here. Oh, there's two, one there, one there, but nothing too important. Oh, some there and there, but uh, I don't think that would interfere with anything. So let's take a look at this part stream. There's the top and back end of our C cab. Again, really cool. A little uh, pretend doors on there, I guess. And then let's turn this this way so we can see. Uh, I think this is the inside, and there we've got uh, quite a few visible mold marks. So again, you can annihilate those with your number 16 hobby blade. And up here you could probably get that really nice with a block of sandpaper. Because it's wide open, you're not really, you know, sanding and hitting a corner or whatever. So again, really nice. There's the outside, so you can see how smooth that is. And there's the little holes for that insert panel. So now let's move on here. Take a look at that Ford emblem right on the back of that trunk lid, really cool. Then we've got our license plates with that really big T in there, which is nice. The uh, big fat rear fenders and our turtle deck and then the little pickup bed. Now just turning this over, you can see there are some mold marks across the back, but again, nothing that you couldn't remove with that number 16 hobby blade. So let's just put our parts back here and then we can move on to the next group. Here we have our interior bucket as well as our frame and the differential components and our disc brakes and pedals and all that other groovy stuff and the top of our pickup truck. Now, unfortunately, there is no gas tank molded in like on the Laurel and Hardy Model T, but there is the seat cushion. I think they did this so that they could get that pattern on there nice without making it, uh, you know, muted out because of the molding process. There's all that pleated upholstery in there, so this is very much like a 70s style thing. I'm amazed that this was actually made in 81. I thought this would have been brought out in like 73. That's my personal opinion and I'm sticking with it! <laughs> anyway, look at that nice uh, pleating in there. And all the gauges, you could actually paint those really, really nicely. The frame is very simplified. It's uh, Z'd in the back here. That's so that the rear axle will sit up here and be level with the front axle. Because on the original Model T's, of course, the frame rails were straight out. So if you had that kind of axle on something sticking straight out, the back wheels would be way up here and it would actually have a rake, which is not too bad. Look at the, uh, the ends of the differential here. They have all the little bolts in there, just like on the real thing. So again, I will say thank you very much, MPC slash AMT Ertl, for making this amazing parts tree. And I think Danny's right. This is the coolest looking top of all, especially with this T cut in. Now, this is very reminiscent of the 70s, and uh, that's what they were doing at the car shows. I have magazines. I know what I'm talking about. And there's the uh, top of the roof as well. Now if we turn this over, you can see all the rods in there, which is in braces and brackets, which is correct for the roof. And we do have some mold marks in there that you'll have to take out. And again, the back looks really, really nice with one mold mark there. So make sure you clean that with your da -da -da 
If you know the blade, write it in the comments down below. Now, Danny, I hope you brought your sunglasses because here comes the chrome. All right, we've got this really cool looking chrome parts tree. And as you can see, as if I had to tell you, we have a chrome firewall, so that's cool. We also have two chrome radiators that you can switch in between versions. Look at all the chrome components for your engine. Isn't that a gas? Nobody said that in a long time. Well, I'm bringing it back. It's a gas. Jump in, Jack Flash. It's a gas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh, ooh. There's our intake manifold for the dual four barrel carburetors and the tops for those carburetors and our horns for the carburetors and our windshield frame and some of our wheels here. And there's the four carburetors themselves. All right, enough pointing with a stick. Let's take a look at that. Look at that chrome. Oh my goodness. I might just have a breakdown here. <laughs> okay, so there it is. Our chrome is insane! There's our wheels. Look at the carburetor detail. Carburetor detail. Intake of the carburetor detail. Fuel cell right there. Again, belts and pulleys. Starter motor. It's chrome, everybody. Chrome! In the future, everything's chrome. There are some old marks in the back of the radiators. Scrape those out with that number 16 hobby blade. And if you do that, your radiator, the gray plastic part, will fit in there nice. And of course, paint that black because nobody wants to see gray plastic. Anyway, that is our chrome tree. And we actually have a surprise coming up. And here's our surprise. It's more chrome. <laughs> So there we've got our disc brake calipers. They actually have dual pistons on there, so that's cool. There's our spring and our torque tube and rear axle, as well as all those wire wheels and one of our chrome wheels with the backs. And then we have our exhaust manifolds. Look at how huge these things are. And there's our gear shift lever. Hello, Mr. Gear Shift Lever. All right, so one of these fell off, so I'll just put that to the side. But look at that chrome detail. Man, you're going to blow a bolt at Monster Hobbies. That's right, Johnny. Tell them what they've won. Well, they haven't won anything. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, that's embarrassing. Okay, but anyway, check all that out. That's really good. There are some mold marks on the back here. Now, hopefully those won't uh, interfere with too much because you really don't want to scrape them and have silver paint, but you may have to. So be prepared, like the Boy Scouts say, be prepared. Actually, Scouts Canada. Anyway, there we go. Here we have our clear plastic components. This is upside down, but you can see we've got that wonderful clear glass T there for the back window, as well as these two little windows for the C cab. And then these pieces of glass are for the front windshield and we have our headlights here. So just turning this over and bringing it up into the camera, you can see how this looks. You can see the sunken bit around each of the window glass pieces. And I'm keeping this in the plastic bag just to keep it from scratching. This is really all it is, so there's not too much there. But overall, it does look cool. There's a T for Trevor. That's me. And here we have the tires for this model kit. And what would be a model car without tires? Oh, it might be uh, sitting on some blocks, I guess. Anyway, we have the wonderful Goodyear Blue Streak Racing Special Tires. We also have Goodyear Polyglass GTs. And then we have Handcrafted Denman Premium Sport Tires. These are like motorbike tires for those really cool wire wheels. So looking at these ones from the side, you can see a nice little tread pattern in here, which is just basically a couple little dashes and lines. The Goodyear lettering stands out nice and tall and proud. And we can also see the Blue Streak Drag Race Specials on here. And that's the lettering, of course. Then here we have our Goodyear Polyglass GTs with the letters sticking way up. These are nice to paint uh, white letters on there. Also, we get that really nice tight tread inside there. But let's look at these cool premium tires. Now, these are really, really narrow, as you can see. They do have a nice tread pattern in here. And the lettering is really awesome, goes all the way around, handcrafted, really cool. So again, excellent tires made by MPC AMT slash Ertl. Hopefully round two can bring these out sometime. Hmm, letter writing campaign. Okay, Danny, show us those groovy decals. 
And here we are with our decal sheet. Check out these cool rainbow colors on here. Just right for our times these days, it seems. All right, and then we've got this uh, 25T pickup down here in the old red, white, and blue. Hooker's headers decals, Holly carburetor, and a bunch of these little cool ones. There's Wheeland as well. And then over here, we've got those white pinstripes. So you got your choice of painting this body in a darker color, maybe like a red or uh, something like that. And then you can add on these, or you could paint it white and put on these cool rainbow decals. The choice is up to you, but I notice there's no license plates on here. So you could either paint the plastic ones up really cool or put and print your own by looking at this link up here. If you like that video, wait till you see what I've got inside this box. Just simply find it by clicking up here. And until next time, happy model building.